And welcome back, Ms. Young. I'm sorry. How did uh, you get started and what was your entrance in writing uh, the guidebook for use? Because I do understand you, your first guidebook you wrote was in 2005. Correct. Okay, let's go back. Um, my father is an actor, and you said something about parents pushing. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, my father didn't start to push me until I attended uh, college. I, I attended Central State University, and my first shot at acting was a play that was offered through a drama course. My father was like, take your acting classes, take your acting classes, so I took my acting classes. Uh, Mrs. Lois McGuire, I'll never forget her, mm -hmm. and there was a play that we put on. Mm -hmm. And from that point, um, my father had me do a photo shot. I know this man in Atlanta, he's going to take some head shots of you. So then I had the head shots done. And then moving here to Michigan, um, the agencies or the talent agencies aren't huge. But when they see a face or a talent and they want to use you, they will use you. Mm -hmm. So I got picked for a couple of commercials mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. From that point, I became an acting coach for a company here. So with all that, I said, hey, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to start my own company, Ardenell. I'm going to teach kids how to act, but with a unique approach with kids that have troubles or issues they can develop appropriate socialization skills and at the same time uh, improve that acting technique. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started out. And so your guidebook, which we have here, um, and of course the viewers will have an up close on it as we go through the interview, but in the guidebook, tell me a little bit about what's in the guidebook. Like if a team want to get this book and they want to look through it, what are they looking for in this guidebook? Oh, sincere, they're looking at the real deal because they're what they're looking at is the lives of children that I've taught. Uh, these two books make up 12 years of my teaching experience. Mm -hmm. And basically what the, the first book that was wrote in 2005 was the first eight and a half years of teaching. Mm -hmm. And basically the dilemmas and the issues that the kids are bringing to school before you can uh, begin to implement the curriculum. So just different situations and dilemmas that children go through are faced with, like mm -hmm. overwhelming burdens. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to be children, but they're bringing these uh, events to school, mm -hmm. which, makes, which makes it sometimes, unfortunately, for a teacher um, challenging. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, it gave me an opportunity to say, hey, what else can I do besides teach? And the children have an outlet and it can be exciting and at the fr and all at the same time they're really getting therapy because what's ever on their chest they're getting a chance to let it out and, and I'm assuming it. by you being a teacher for as many years this is how being a teacher as a result of being a teacher made you have the compassion for reaching out to the children which means I'm sure that it's very easy to promote what you're doing for the children when it comes to arts and how do you, but how do you get the children to get, to gain an entrance in what you're doing? Actually, they let you know. Because as I said, Sinceria, with some of the arts and the budget not being in different schools for the arts, the kids will tell you, I'm, I want to do something else. Mm. Um, what age group of kids, of teens we're talking about that, that finally finds out you know, that they want to take a certain career path or they want to go into a certain industry. A lot of them know at, at the very age of seven that mm -hmm. they want to do that. And then um, some kids don't get it until the in-between years. Mm -hmm. By 18, usually they know, hey, I want to go to college. I want to get a job mm -hmm. or I want to do something in the arts. By 18, they automatically know if that's, that's something that they want to pursue full time on the full time basis or is that something that you know, their interests. Now, where are these kids going um, for your program? It's an after-school program. I, I heard sure. you mention that. Are you going to, th to their place, or are they coming to you? Do you have a place established for this type Good of program? Good question. I had my acting assistants and myself, and the schools that request us, we would go into those schools and provide the services for those children, uh, an interval of an hour and a half per day, 
four days, I believe, a week. Now, in the summertime, it gives me an opportunity, and on the weekends during the duration of the year, to conduct uh, six-week, four-week acting workshops, okay. which are which are done in various places in the area. I would like on to help you, uh, oh, wow. Miss Young, um, establish you a place of consistency where these children can come and actually get this type of arts or you know even if they have this level of entrance where they can tap into it on a consistent basis mm -hmm. and we'll talk after the show but we do uh, have some similarities in that area to direct some passion towards some use in these different areas so we will talk so being on the share today show is always a benefit for either the community or either our guests um, be, but before we take our next break I want to prepare you for this because one I want to ask you what what has been your level as far as acting who have you acted for I, I heard you say you've done some commercials have you played in any uh, any roles in a television program and if so what would be the role that you would say that you play that was phenomenal or that left an impression on you Wow, let me just say I did a play in Gia of Wayne State University is a dynamic filmmaker. Okay. And in 2006, I had the opportunity and the privilege to play Auntie. Okay, and that was your character, and that was Auntie. My, Auntie. Okay. And basically what I was doing was bringing back all the history of where I had learned to make all these good bacon desserts. Mm -hmm. So it consisted of a, uh, the children on the stage along with myself explaining to the children <clears throat> how these recipes came down and passed from generations mm -hmm. and how our families had migrated from different places all over uh, the South mm -hmm. and how they migrated to Michigan. Um, another dynamic occasion for me is that I had wrote and produced the play on Marcus Garvey's life okay. in 2005, mm -hmm. which was done for the school that I taught at at Marcus Garvey and it was just um, you know you hear so many different negatives that go behind Marcus Garvey's name so I had the privilege to research him on my own and do a play and it was well um, it was well received. Well listen when we come back we're gonna ask you to take us into the character of Auntie okay? Sure. Thank you. We'll be right back in a moment. Mm -hmm. 